Thank you so much, Ed. It's so great to be back here in the indomitable spirit of people in this industry, a spirit that has uh, kept the flame despite really not a lot of help from the economy over the past four years. You know, the economy that we're going through kind of reminds me of what we've seen this week. Two perfect metaphors for the economy. One would be Hurricane Sandy, uh, which the, the financial meltdown of 2008 and the struggling economy since is kind of our Sandy in the, uh, in the economy. And then Sunday's TFR over Orlando, which was called by one blogger the world's most expensive pizza delivery. Uh, since the president didn't actually get off the plane, I understand. But, but anyway, there was the TFR and you know, cast over all of central Florida. That's kind of uh, representative of the lack of help, uh, other than the senator and the congressman, but, but certainly from this administration, not a lot of encouragement. And as a result of all of this, the economy, since coming out of recession officially in June 2009, has averaged 2% growth. Do you know that in the United States, since the end of World War II, through the present, we've averaged 3% growth, a little over, actually, 3.1. So we're growing at 2% now. If we're not in recession, and the numbers say we're not, we should be growing at 4. We're growing at half of where we should go right now. And here's the point that I would like to bring up. If you remember one thing about, about my little talk, it's that this industry in particular thrives when the needle is over 3%. The DFC-90 all-digital attitude-based autopilot delivers significant performance and safety improvements over previous generation systems. Its innovative flight envelope protection guards against autopilot-induced stalls, and the straight and level mode provides one-button recovery from unusual attitudes for an added measure of safety. Immensely popular within the Cirrus community, the DFC-90 is now being made available for a growing list of aircraft including Piper Matrix and Mirage, Cessna 182s, and Beach Bonanzas and Barons. Fly with confidence. Fly with DFC-90. This industry is a 3% plus industry. That's when the symbiotic relationship between the economy helping aviation and aviation helping the economy really kicks in. And it's hard to get to critical mass, isn't it, when we're 2% growth. So this election, the domestic issue, the mother of all issues in this domestic, on the domestic side, is how do we get back to 3% to 4% growth? Because if we don't, if we struggle along at 2% growth, this industry is going to have severe headwinds. My industry and the media is going to have severe headwinds. A lot of people are going to have headwinds. It is absolutely a moral issue that we get back to 3 and 4% growth when we look at the unemployment in the land. So how do we do that? We have to have a taxation system that is not only benign and reasonable, but predictable. It's all well and good, and I 100% I support things like accelerated depreciation and all of those things. But we have to have a scheme where both the individual tax rates and the corporate tax rates are competitive on a global basis. You know, they're not competitive on a global basis. There's a school of thought that says, you know, when you look at the U.S. income tax rate, that it's fairly low on a global basis. Most other nations don't pay state and local income taxes on top of that, and sales taxes and capital gains as well. It's getting pretty stiff. And our corporate tax is now an outlier in the world. You know, Great Britain is down uh, way below where we are. Most countries are way below where we are. We've got to be able to solve this problem. And to the people in Washington who say we need more money because of the deficit, um, the government is now taking 25% of the GDP, the federal government. Uh, the economy thrives best. The U.S. economy is really geared for thriving when the federal uh, budget is about 18 or 19 percent of the overall GDP. It should, under no circumstances, get over 20. And if you think, um, if you think that we uh, are going to have deficit problems the way we are now, if we're going to uh, paralyze the private economy, uh, I think we're there, that's going to get worse. Welcome to the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource. Real-time, 24-7 online, audio, and video programming, where aviation has been getting updated for over a decade. Distributing over 11,000 stories, features, audio, and video programs every year, only ANN covers aviation and aerospace with this much depth, insight, and expertise. Check us out on the web at aero-news.net. Regulation has been alluded to. I want you to think about this. 
is an illustration of the effect of regulation on the U.S. economy. Over the last 20 years, what parts of the U.S. economy have really thrived come hell or high water, come recession or growth? They've been what I call the algorithmic industries. In Silicon Valley, that would be software. On Wall Street, that would be trading algorithms. You know, if you actually don't make anything, this is a pretty good economy. And why is that? Because the EPA doesn't cross paths with you. You don't make money. You know, the whole idea in Silicon Valley where I live is not to make money until you go public. Then, then you're kind of forced to make money. But the whole idea before you um, go public is to not make money and put it all into growth. And then what happens? You get, uh, you get to monetize all your work at the capital gains tax rate. So is it any wonder is it any wonder that the algorithmic industries have boomed over the last 20 years and the actual physical industries, making things, shipping things, transportation, aviation, have been paying a disproportionate penalty in this environment? Third one, and this is, uh, this is really a key one to watch. Uh, Carl Schramm, um, he used to be head of the Kaufman Foundation and, and is now, uh, now is an academic, has pointed out that the difference between European-style growth, you know, Europe is kind of used to 2% growth. This year, they would take 2% growth. They would be happy to have 2% growth next year. But by and large, over the last 20 years, they've averaged 2% growth, and the U.S. has averaged over 3. What is the difference in that 1% incremental difference, that delta between 2 and 3%? SRAM identified it as the number of companies, the number of startups that get to a billion dollars a year in revenue within 20 years. They don't have to be Facebooks. They don't have to be Google. They just have to get grounded and they have to make progress. And where is the biggest market for this industry? It's in those very kinds of companies getting started. We have to have the tax and regulatory policies that are going to get us back to 3% growth, really 4% growth to make up for the lost time. So I support all the efforts that everybody is making, particularly the senator and the congressman. We've all got to come together, whether we wear a D or an R on our jersey, and really concentrate on the big issue, and that is to get back to 3 and 4% growth. Thank you.